This conference will now be recorded. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, ServiceNow Admin and Development. Today we are going to see subflow in Flow Designer. So this is the ServiceNow Flow Designer session five and probably the last session on Flow Designer. So we are going to see a use case and that will be an extension of what we saw in the last session, that is session four. So let me quickly share my screen and I'll explain you the use case. So I am sharing my screen. And hope you people can see my screen. So subflow. So subflow is a flow that can be called or triggered in a flow. We already know what is a flow, right? We saw in the previous sessions. So a subflow has got a set of options, input and output variables. A subflow can take inputs from flow that triggers it and then perform actions based on these inputs. A subflow takes inputs from the flow that triggers it and then perform actions based on these inputs. What is the use case? The use case over here is an extension of what we saw last time. <coughs> Sorry, we had table A, we had table B. You already know that these are the fields in the tables. We created an action in the last session to push data from table A to table B. We saw that we did it successfully. Now, what is the use case today? We will extend this. The main use case is this push data from A to B. This is working for us, correct? And then there is there will be a checkbox on table A on the form called create incident. Last time it was there, but I told you to just ignore those fields because I'm going to show you those things later. And that's the reason why I didn't talk about those fields. Now, today we are going to say this. So if the checkbox create incident is checked, it will also create an incident after pushing data from table A to table B. And then from table A, we are pass, going to pass something to the newly created incident, maybe something in the short description. It will get copied from A to the incident. Getting? So now, let us open, let me close the unwanted tabs. Close. And uh, here we come to the instance. This is flow design, a favorite I have stored. And yeah, it is coming up. Cool. A quick revision of what is there already in the system. We created this flow, push TBL A, TBL B. This is the flow we refer to, which is already disabled we referred this and created our own flow and it contains these things push from table a to table b see a record gets created in table a immediately push it to table b and then we had something like an acknowledgement that will come from table b and it will update a field in table A this way. So let us try to edit this. Before editing, we are going to create a subflow. Close this. I already have a subflow over here. We will refer to the subflow and we will create a brand new. So in subflows, I have something called PKJ create INC. First of all, before opening this, let me show you table A, hyphen A, where are those fields? If I do like this, I know if I type in employee ID, employee name, employee address, and submit the record, it is going to push this to table B. I already know that, but 
in this use case after giving these things in the input if i check this and if i select a color from this this is a reference to the user table this is a reference field this is a checkbox true false true false field if i do like this and now if i submit this record first thing it will do it will push these things to table b it will give us the acknowledgement from table b and then the next action will be to create a new incident and pass something to the short description and the caller would be this in the incident this is the use case a new incident will be created with this caller in the caller field and something uh, maybe acknowledgement and some static text would be sent to the incident this is what we are going to do coming back to the subflows i already have a flow i created as part of r d we will refer to this subflow and create our own open This is how it looks. When you open a subflow, it will look like this. It has got a set of inputs like we have in actions. See, I have created variables, short description, type string, caller, type string. And then I have created one output variable. This is the label and this is the actual name. Label, actual name. Of the variables then as i said a flow has input fields a set of actions the action here is create incident create record incident table so it knows it has to create a record in incident and the fields short description what it should what should go into this the input that we have defined over here this similarly in the caller field water comes in this variable should go to incident tables caller field right hand side the variables that we have defined in the beginning over here left hand side are incident tables field simple creation of a new record a new incident based on the inputs and then we have assigned subflow outputs this will run independently the subflow and it will write some message say success okay so now let us try to create our own subflow so i'll do like this subflow name uh, the old one is pkj create inc the new one let it be pkj create sorry it's this one is inc ours one is create incident let it be like this and then i will submit it as soon as i submit this is how it will look it will show input output it will show action these are the inputs so add click on plus so that we can add a variable so this is something called shrt desc short description is a label if I move away my cursor, it will automatically take it. Though we can type additional things like this and give a custom name. I want to add one more. I click on plus variable name, caller. I move away my cursor. It took the variable name. These two are string variables. This job is done scroll down i said we have to create one output variable 
take it like this output okay let it be like this output string refer to this what did we do over here yes output is string the next thing that we are going to do is to create an incident based on these two inputs so i am going to add an action over here add action create record do we have it yes coming up okay so it is asking us in what table you want to create a record obviously i want to create an incident so i will select this and then fields i'll have to specify the values so i'll tell it that uh, the caller field will contain whatever we have in the input color field inputs color field will go to color field okay one more short description short description will contain what we have in inputs short description then and then as i said we will write an output so something like let's see a target outputs or something is there update all right over here it should be there a target output assigns the flow output okay this is the one and then i'll say output delete select output variable that we defined in the previous step it is this It's coming in the drop down and assign a hard coded value over it this means the incident is created done everything is done let us save this okay the subflow is ready again a subflow as i said contains it is a flow that contains set of actions in input and output variables it takes input from the flow that triggers it so where is the flow that trigger this subflow we already have it which do a minor tweaking in the flow that were designed in the last session so let's do one thing let us publish this so that it, it is available in the flow saved now let us close this old subflow let us keep this one open go to home and go to flows we will open our flow before that we will open that disabled the old working example that i did as part of rnd so that we can refer to it and modify our own flow see this is the one and where is our our copy is this all right to avoid confusion i'll close our subflow now there are just two flows open one which we are going to refer to create a similar thing and the one which we created last time in session 4 i am going to do some additional stuff over here what is that additional stuff 
see if the checkbox is checked okay then call the subflow let us add an if action if what is the condition that field on table a that field on table a record created table a record where is that field create incident the checkbox field is true that means while submitting while creating the record in table a the checkbox is checked create incident checkbox then what to do click on done see this is the condition if this condition is satisfied then trigger our workflow add subflow this time we are going to select this and we should be able to yes we can see our subflow here select and then the subflow inputs short description and color is what we will see over here the short description we will pass to subflow would be whatever we have over here on table a so let's see over here what did we pass as input if i open this acknowledgement okay and a static text called subflow triggered control c and acknowledgement okay fine so short description is control v it then be okay we will type it subflow trigger and something dynamic that we will pass record created a acknowledgement table b acknowledgement okay and caller whatever comes over here caller will be let us see this the caller present in table a okay whatever caller is present in table a caller where is that yes yes hope this is clear and then click on done cool does it look similar yes it does this is the disabled copy this is what we are going to publish i'm going to save this this is our flow we created last in the last session we have done some tweaking we added a condition if the checkbox create incident is true then call this subflow inside this main flow this whole is a flow and we are going to call a subflow from this activate then we will do some testing around this we do not know if it will work or not if it doesn't work we will do some troubleshooting around it it is saving it is activating it flow activated successfully all right so now we are good to go with the testing how many records do we have let us delete the garbage records don't need only one delete it just to avoid confusion i am deleting this otherwise we are good to keep them as it blank table b make it empty
yes. Delete. Both the tables are empty. They don't have any record. Let us create one in table A. I will give it as E001. Let it be like Rahul. Address. Short address. And then if you remember, we used to for this to push the record to table B. But then I'm going to do something additional. I also want to create an incident with this as the caller, this person. Maybe Alia. Create an incident with this caller. And in the short description, give us a static text, subflow triggered, and this acknowledgement. This step will execute prior to the subflow. So we will have this. So let, let us see if I save this. First of all, let us see incidents. I will take a new tab. Or let it be like this. I will submit this. What happened? Did we get the acknowledgement? Yes. And then I believe after this step executed, the next step we have is to trigger the subflow and pass on these details as input to create an incident. So did it actually create an incident? Let us check. I will duplicate this type. I'll go to incidents and we will sort it out by updated so we can see if the system has actually created anything or not. I want to see all the open incidents. This is the one I have. And yes, it did create subflow triggered 240. Today's date, yes, it did create an incident. See, where is the short description? Does it contain our text? Yes, it does contain our text. Somehow, it didn't get the value, the acknowledgement. That is not an issue. That that some troubleshooting can be done. Right. But main thing I wanted to show you this. Whatever we passed from there, we have received over here. So that's the power of submission of flow designer, friends. So this is how our subflow is executed, and we can pass values from there. All right. So. Let us go back and check our subflow where it is. Yeah. What are we doing? We pass some dynamic value, but it was not available. And that's the reason. Let's see. Short description. Let us pass something else. Along with this, I want to pass record created was to table B. Okay, this step and acknowledgement B. This is what I want to pass. And then if I save this, activate. Yeah. 
yes and then let us try to do it again let us create a new record new e002 and uh, address and then this this time also i want to select maybe some other color mm, swaraj okay and if i submit this let's see what happens get the acknowledgement yes and now let us go to this incident table refresh one more created and let it open swaraj patel it created and yes this is what we missed in the previous example previous use case test case this is how we dynamically brought a value over here from table a whatever is there received as an acknowledgement from table b we have passed it to the incident and friend this is how we use subflows to pass inputs take outputs let us see now in the flow designer let us see the executions this must be the latest one today's date 11:53 no no if i sort it this is the old one 21st gen 30 gen 17111 this should be the latest everything completed see pushing activity to from table a to table b completed Acknowledgement part completed. Checkbox evaluation was true, and that's the reason this was completed. And then if I scroll down, if I click on this subflow, we will see all these things. And the output is success. This is what we wrote, the output. We set it to success. And you can even see subflow trigger. And what is this? okay caller passed okay swaraj id sys id all right so this is how it executed successfully and we were able to pass dynamic values in subflow so friends uh, let us execute one more test case this time we won't select create incident because we don't want to create an incident we just want to push the values just to make sure our stuff works fine or not okay so keep this open our flow ours is this go back this time i'll create e003 e003 Okay, address three, and I won't select this. Then it's in this case, it is expected. It should not create an incident. I just want to check if our flow works fine as expected. That's the reason I'm doing this. It should give us the acknowledgement. It must have pushed. It must be getting back. Yes. So now that we have got the acknowledgement going ahead. Let's see if we have any new incident in the system. 
if we have it should be something like 242 incident open yes we don't have anything these are the two we created when the checkbox was checked we don't have any new incident that means our flow and subflow is working perfectly fine if we go to the executions execution it must show the if condition has an evaluated to true so it should show it as false 21st 115 this is the latest one and exactly this condition evaluated to false and the subflow didn't execute and that's the reason the incident was not created so friends this was all about service now flow designer now after going to my five videos on flow designer you should be you should stand somewhere like in a position so that you can explore on your own the rest of the feature it is very vast you know the actions and all out of the box actions you should be able to explore rest of the things on your own fine so thank you very much friends i'll end the meeting now so hopefully i'll post my new video next weekend and i want to show you some small stuff on integration hub it is about e-bonding service now to service now integration using integration hub so stay connected all right thank you very much bye, -bye.